I'm truly surprised that each year there's someone who literally just throws their chance away and I don't understand it for the life of me I don't understand how you do all the work you get there and you literally just throw your chance away I, I'll never understand it let's go ahead and talk about it guys and I'm like come on through cook yeah I want to pull my soapbox, that's basically it. Let's talk about drag and all its forms. What? <laughs> hey guys, thanks so much for clicking on the video. This is my review for RuPaul's Drag Race. This is season 11. This is episode one. And I'm excited. I'm always excited to actually start a new season. So this is what we're doing. We're starting a new season. And there is an array of girls for season 11. And they're from all over the place. Um, let's just go ahead and get started because there's a lot of them. First girl out that we actually see is Miss Vanjie. Miss Vanjie. And you know I was so happy to see her. I love Miss Vanjie Chow. And she was in full on clown mode. She was cutting up already. As soon as she got there, she's the first girl out. She broke out and started hiding. She was hiding behind a partition so no one could see her. I said, you know what, Vanjie, don't start. And I said, it seems as though they've actually, somebody said, listen, girl, you're going to be the comic relief. And that's, that's what it's going to be. It's going to be all comedy, Miss Vanjie. You're going to do your thing as well, but bitch, you're going to be the comedy. And I think she said, okay, let's do it. So I laughed. I said, okay, so she's hiding. Next comes Nina West. Miss Nina West, she's a former Miss EOY. Okay, Entertainer of the Year. She's 39 years old. She is from Columbus, Ohio. She's really close to me. She's not um, too far away from where I live. A couple hours. And, uh, eh. You know, Miss Nina is more of a camp queen. She's kind of campy. So, it, it, she's going to be good for laughs and, and different things like that. I think she's going to do really, really well when it comes to acting challenges and things of that nature. Next, we got Sugar Kane came in. She's 40, and she's from New York. I said, come on for the older girls, child. You know, those are my girls. Those are in, they're in my realm, honey. So I was like, okay, cool. It's good to see them, though. You know, I'm, I'm loving that there's representation of an older crowd there. So it is what it is. People ask me all the time, why do you keep auditioning? This is why. There's a bitch there that's 39. There's a bitch there that's 40. I'm 47. What what about it? And I'm going to keep on auditioning. Anyway, moving on. Plastique TR comes next. She's from Texas. She's only 21. Drop dead gorgeous. Drop dead gorgeous. She is definitely a glamour girl. And she actually belongs to Miss Alyssa Edwards, honey. That's, it hasn't been said on the show yet, but she belongs to the House of Edwards, baby. So there's going to be good things coming from her. So y'all might as well just get ready, honey, for Miss Plastique. But she's beautiful. She is absolutely beautiful. Um, next is Mercedes Iman Diamond. She comes from Minnesota, but she called herself the African Princess. And she's originally from Kenya. She is the very first Muslim queen to actually come to the competition. Baby, she broke them up and did this real loud. I said, girl, and they were giving her, who is this bitch, honey? I said, uh -huh, y'all better get ready. And the bitch was lovely. The bitch had a white gown and foxtails. I said, Nasty, nasty. The bitch had, she's holding her hand like this, baby, and it was draped in stones. I said, bitch. The aesthetic was everything. Long ponytail, baby. Snatched. It was given. Honey, her hair was pulled so tight that it felt looked like a cat was slicking her head, honey. And it was pulled up and hanging. I said, girl, beautiful, beautiful and ready. I was like, okay, all right, girl. 
I'm here for it. I, I, I'm living for it. They didn't know how to take her. And that was the part that I really liked. That those girls didn't know how to take her. Um, Nina actually had the nerve to throw some shade at her already. Because her name is Mercedes. Maybe she will call her. So it said more like a Buick. I said, no, Miss Nina. Miss Nina. Girl, you're good, girl, but it's not fierce for you like that to where you get to start reading the girls are carrying on. You just concentrate on what you're doing, bitch. Don't start trying to read, girl, because it's not that smooth for you like that, mom. So I said, okay. So um, after that, Miss Scarlett came in. Honey, Miss Scarlett is from New York. She's another one. Miss Scarlett. See, during the promo stuff, I saw Scarlett, and she was stunning stunning um she's a very talented queen i know she actually went to school at fit so she could so they're gonna have to watch out for that bitch when it comes to like costumes and stuff like that they're gonna have to watch out for her there but she also has a boyish piece to her she reminds me of milk like when you're looking at your sure because milk is very pretty but Milk also is a little boy at heart. So that's that thing. And you know, with the whole new, that th there's a new movement of drag. And again, here we go with the no teddies in thing. I was like, okay, cool, no problem. She fits that whole, the valid tchotchke and all of that. She fits that stuff. So I'm like, okay, cool. But again, bitch can sew. So y'all better be watching out because costumes wise, she's going to give you all a problem. Um, Miss Honey Davenport rolled through again, New York. A lot of New York City girls, you know how this goes. Usually, there's it's either a lot of girls from New York, a lot of girls from Vegas, a lot of girls from California. You know how it goes, or maybe a mix of the two sometimes. Um, then after that, you got another Davenport roll through Miss Akaria Davenport roll through. Now, she's a former Miss Black Universe. And somebody made a smart comment like, this is like the year of the pageant, girl. It is. It is. And you all should be nervous. You should be. If you're not, you're foolish. But you should be. Them bitches know what they're doing. They know how to get dressed. They know how to get dressed quick. And they know how to pull some shit together. So you should be nervous, honey. I'm just saying. Anyway. Next was Evie Audley came through being Odd and Evie, honey, and she, you know, she's from Denver. She's the strange one of the bunch. Very, very strange. Bitch came in with a feather, a feather boa with a wire in it and a Hot Wheels car. I just looked at her. I said, okay, if you must. Strange. Totally strange. I, it's, child, y'all seen my, my thumbnail, honey, for this video. Miss Evie, honey. <laughs> She's interesting. Then next came my girl, honey, Miss Silky Nutmeg Gunosh, honey. And she is, she's, I don't, you know what? Originally, I thought she may end up being like Miss Congeniality, but I don't think so. I don't think so because the girls, we're going to see. We're just going to see how it plays out. We'll just, we'll see how it plays out. But I love Miss Silky. She is a huge personality. Um... And it was seeming as though people were thinking that it was put on. But I, I truly believe that at heart, that is truly her. That she really does have that big personality. I believe it. I don't think she's putting on for the camera. I mean, she was putting on some for the cameras. But I don't think she's totally putting on for the camera. I believe she is that person. And I'm here for it. I like her. I really do. The next came Miss Brooklyn Heights, baby. Like I said, year of the of the uh, pageant girls. She's a former Miss Continental, honey. And Miss Brooklyn is bad, bad, bad to the bone. So y'all better just get ready, honey. Get ready. Um, next we had Ariel Versace, cute and tiny. She's cute and she's tiny and she's a little fireball. She already done told the girls. I can dance and I can perform. So I'm like, okay, this is going to be interesting. And the bitch got hair. I live, she had this crimped out uh, big hair. It was big. It was fabulous. The hair was bigger than her. 
I said, girl, yes, ma'am. I was here for the hair. The hair got me. The outfit was cute. It was very cute, but the hair was everything. Like I said, her hair was bigger than her. I was here for it. Next was Raja O'Hara. She's from Dallas, Texas. She rolled through. Miss Raja's cool. Her damn earrings kept falling off. Child, they were reading her down. They were giving girl. This is national TV, honey. You might want to put some staples on those, girl. Staple them to the side of your head, girl. I said, child, they trying her, honey. But, um, yeah, girl, you should have been, come on, some glue, something. You know, girl, you know how this goes. Kahana Montrese was next. She's from Vegas. And yes, she belongs to Mocha Montrese. So definitely she has some things to live up to. She actually even looks like Mocha Child. I said, oh my gosh. So she's a dancing girl and she's also a show queen. She said she's a show, show girl queen. So I said, okay. And then you have my YouTube sister, Soju, who's from Los Angeles, California. And again, she has a large presence on YouTube. And I was like, okay, come on, Miss Soju girl. So um, they were reading her from the door. When she came through, baby, they were giving her. Because again, Soju doesn't have a big name in the performance world. Again, they kind of were paying her no mind because of her. She's a YouTube girl. So they're like, girl, whatever. And that's just what they gave her. Or whatever, Miss Soju. And she rolled through and um, they were calling her Elvis. I said, oh, these bitches, child. They're a mess. Called her Elvis. And I just was like, all right, Miss Soju. You know, her aesthetic is not my aesthetic. But again, we, we don't totally come from the same place. I occupy space on YouTube. I love my YouTube presence. Trust me, I work very hard to get my my YouTube presence and I appreciate my presence on YouTube and it does work for me but I am not a YouTube queen I have become a YouTube queen but I came from the ballroom I came from the bar I came from the pageant world I've done all those things those were my beginnings I became a YouTube queen I actually incorporated YouTube into what I do so do it's, she is literally a YouTube queen. Um, I could actually see it in this episode. I could kind of see where there's where she's lacking some things because of the fact that she is literally like a media presence. Um, there's a piece of a polish that is kind of missing that she would have if she actually was dead on in front of people because she can hide things. Like right now, you you I could take and do things and you wouldn't even know if this outfit didn't even have a back in it. Because those are the little games you can play when you are someone who's just in front of a camera. But trust and believe there's a back in my garment. But again, you understand what I'm saying. So I don't know how Miss Soju's stuff was going to translate. So I said, okay, Miss Soju, but I'm gonna give her a fair chance. Let's roll. Rue comes out. Um, Vanji halfway through, Vanji so goddamn nabby and so crazy, she couldn't stay hidden the whole time. She actually brought her little cell phone out halfway through and was cracking jokes. And I said, she is, she really is like the jokester. And she's just reading, 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 reading. I said, Miss Vanji, girl, stop reading. She's reading the girls. Um, the first thing was a photo shoot. And that was their mini challenge. There was a surprise pop up alumni is basically what it was. Each girl that came out, there was some queen that already has been there, popped up in their photo shoot, and the whole mission was to actually, they had full control over directing their photo shoot, and they had to outshine the other girl. Uh, Miss Vanjie, child, listen, listen. Miss Vanjie, literally, they put Miss Vanjie in there with Pheromone. You all know Pheromone is goddamn beautiful. You know what Vanjie did, honey? She took and covered the bitch up in every shot. She literally covered her up. She stood in front of her. She told her in the one shot, bitch, turn around. Turn your back to the camera. Turn your face to the wall. I said, oh, Vanjie, bitch, you are trying it. But that's how she did it. That was her strategy. I said, oh, girl, that's a mess. And Miss Fair was like, well, girl, I mean, I, I guess. I guess she knows what she's doing, even if I'm not sure. But she knew exactly what she was doing. 
honey, she covered your monkey ass up, honey. I said, oh my gosh. Mercedes was completely clueless. So she had all of this. Her aesthetic is everything. And it was like, girl, these pictures are not going to be worth a quarter because it was just, it had no direction. It's like, oh, well, we're just going to sit down on the couch. And she had Delta with her. Girl, we're just going to sit on the couch. And Rue was trying to give her a hint. She's like, girl, well, how do you want Delta to sit? You know, is there some specific place you want Delta to sit? Oh, no, girl, she'll just sit down. I was like, girl, you can go home like this, honey. This is stupid. You got to come on. You ain't even picking up on the clues. Silky rolled through, baby. Silky ended up winning the challenge, and it was very easy to see why. Silky, Silky sews. Silky knows what she's doing, and she already said she wants to have a spinoff show. So that's, I was like, girl, okay, Miss Silky. I said, this is either going to work for you or it's going to work against you. It's going to be interesting to see how it falls out. But anyway, she won that mini challenge because of her attention to detail and her, her attention to placement of everything in the photo. And of course, they recognized that. She made sure, and she was in with Mariah. Mariah Balenciaga. So again, another beautiful bitch. So, you know, Silky's a big girl. So she represented for the big girl, but she's so confident. I just love her. Oh my God, I just love her. Again, she like a baby Latrice. She like a baby Latrice. But she had attention to everything and the, and the way things were going to be shot and all. And it worked out in the end. She won. So the Maxi Challenge, they were actually given these trunks. And uh, being as though Silky won the Manny Challenge, she was able to actually give each girl their trunks. And she didn't play any games. She literally, and the trunks all belong to an alumni. She literally gave every girl a trunk where the aesthetic was basically very similar to what their aesthetic was. She played it very, very fair. I was like, mm, okay, all right. But again, that's who I who I really believe that she truly is. I, like I said, she's very much like Latrice, very lovable. And again, I think she's a very going to be a very fair person. I just think that's just who she is. Look, I'm sold on it. If the bitch is acting, she's a good actress. Okay. So this is what she's doing. Then I was like, oh, girl, you all don't stop this with this cow, cow. They got out of drag. Honey, they all looking at each other. Talking about, Ooh. I said, girl, if you bitches don't go sit down. Go sit down. Wait till the pit crew come in. Y'all can lay with the pit crew or, or try to, you know, get with the pit crew. Stop trying to get with each other. It's a mess. Anyway. <sighs> Moving on. So, um, Miley Cyrus was the first guest judge. So I was so happy to see Miley. And she came in undercover as one of the crew members. And child Miss Silky busted her out. And the girls had been complaining. They were they had started complaining. They were saying that Silky never shuts up, that her battery never runs down, that she's just like all this high power energy, and it was starting to really irritate them. I was like, oh, okay. But she ended up busting Miley, honey. She's like, uh, come here, baby. Come here. They're doing their makeup. She said, come here. She kept looking at her and looking at her. And the next thing you know, she had picked her up, was carrying her around, telling her to get on her back. She was doing the most. She really was doing the most. And a couple people made a couple comments about her trying to shoot for a spinoff show. And Rue even made a joke about it. And Rue was like, somebody's trying to get a, a spinoff, honey. I was like, hey, look. Girl, shoot your shot, bitch. You didn't did a whole lot to get there. Anyway, so um, it just continued on. She was driving them nuts. Miley gave them some nice, solid, really, really solid advice just about the business in general. It was, it was a really good talk that she had with them. I like that, Miley Cyrus. I really do. Um... Anyway, and as they were going through and they were getting their outfits made and everything, honey, all the girls were so worried about Silky and and because she kept playing around, she playing around, playing around. But they were worried about her, and it was like she, she, you, they were gossiping, is what they were doing. wasn't nobody saying nothing to her. They were saying it to each other. It was getting on film. They were gossiping about Miss Silky. I said, y'all are playing games. Y'all are going to mess around. Y'all better be watching Miss Silky, honey, because it's a plan that she has. Y'all going to mess around. And one, 
She's very likable. You're messing around talking about Miss Silky and you'll have America hating you. And then two, you're worried about her and that bitch got it all going on. Because when they hit the runway, that bitch was just fine. She was completely fine out there on that runway. They did their little runway. Um, it was interesting, you know. Some of the outfits were like, Ugh, you know, and some of them were like, okay, cool. Child, they gave Miss Nina West, girl, that damn Michelle said, Nina, sweetie, what's on your feet? Girl, if Nina didn't have these little dick beater pumps on, I said, oh, Nina, now you know better than that bitch. She knew better than them, honey. Them pumps. They were giving me too, too much. I said, girl, and she came out walking with that working nine to five, that kind of walk. I said, now, Miss Nina, stop. The dress was ugly, and she's not really a sewer. So she had said that. She said, they say every year you got to learn to sew. Miss Nina been trying to get on the show for nine years. I said, girl, come on now, nine years, you... Had enough time to learn how to sew. The dress construction wasn't too, too bad. But them shoes, them shoes were an absolute no-no. And she knew better. She knew better. She even said to herself, I know, I know. And it ended up being this whole thing. You know, they kind of beat her up on stage a little bit. And Ross told her, she said, girl, what's saving you is your personality. You have this big personality and the personality's coming through. But you look a mess now. You look a good mess. So they went through that. Um, the one thing about Mercedes, they just said that, you know, she looked good, but she seemed scared or something. Something's missing. I said, yeah, she came through. She bust through into the workroom with such vigor. And then it just kind of, I think she, they said, like, I, I believe the two that she really kind of was kind of scared of the rest of the girls. And looking at the rest of the girls, child, that's, that's again, you, screw all that. If you're only in competition with yourself, then you don't run into those problems. Seriously, I don't care what any other bitch is doing. I'm doing what I'm doing. I'm trying to work with me. I ain't doing the damn what you're doing. Anyway, Brooklyn Heights was the winner. That bitch did a whole little uh, latexy jumpsuit, the little cat suit. In it. it was the, I said, this bitch came through there, baby, and was giving you the X-Men, honey. I said, well, okay, ma'am. It really did. She looked like the X-Men. I was like, I'm here for it. It was cute. I had this slick back uh, blonde hair. It was it was everything. I said, come on, Miss Brooklyn. She's not playing. She actually won the Maxi Challenge and won a seven-night stay in Paris. I said, oh, come on. Y'all coming through with the little gifts this year. Come on. Soju ended up at the bottom. Kahana ended up at the bottom. Miss Soju, listen. Girl, you squandered. You're squandering. When they were coming up with the dress with her, she came up with the whole thing of what she wanted to wear is this dress. She was explaining how it was this Korean type of child what not but a cop out is what it was. It's a bullshit. It's a bullshit, Miss Oju bitch. It wasn't nothing but some utter bullshit that she was putting down. She was going through this whole thing of, oh yeah, I could just really whip this up and throw these layers of tool together and I won't have to really put my padding on and it's a hold up, hold up, Miss Soju. Hold up. So you've auditioned several years to get where you're at. You finally get to the show and you're gonna squander this away because you're trying to figure out reasons not to put your padding and stuff on. Why? You came all this way for what? You shut your page down. To come here for what? To not do the best drag that you could do? What? I didn't understand. I, I was confused. I was completely confused. But again, she's not the first that did it. That worked and worked and worked and worked and got here and then... Child, I don't get you bitches, but okay, whatever. So she ended up in the bottom. She ended up in the bottom with that garbage that she had on. Vanji even said to her... Girl, I had a whole bunch of tool on the first time, and I left first, girl. I said, you know what? She wasn't listening. She wasn't listening. Anyway, Kahana ended up at the bottom. They get, try, They ran her. They said, you said you was a showgirl? Miss Thing, if you're going to stone your tights, stone them all the way to the waistline, honey. How they just stop. Looks a little tacky. 
I said, girl, it really did. It really looked like she ran out of stones. I said, uh uh, ma'am. Not at all. But anyway, they ended up lip syncing to um, The Best of Both Worlds by Hannah Montana. I said, not a Hannah Montana song. Couldn't we have got a record ball? Child, but a Hannah Montana song, child, they both got doing a song. The lip sync was ridiculous. It was ridiculous. Kahana was dancing, and I was just like, see, this this is where my problem comes in with the lip sync for your life. We're like dancing, but the dancing didn't even go with the song. And I'd have to say, actually, Soju's performance of the song, I enjoy better than Kahana's performance of the song. But all in all, Soju ended up going home. And I have to agree with Rue. Even before the... Before they even did the Lip Sync for Your Life, I would have sent Soju home. I would have. I would have sent her home. Um, you got there and you didn't perform up to the level that you should have been performing up to. Period. It just was a mess. That whole... You just squandered that whole challenge away and just gave up your spot. You just literally laid down and rolled over. But um, Kahana, you know, that performance, that was just a mess. She was doing all this old fast dancing and twirling her hair around. Bitch, it's Hannah Montana. So that, that stuff kind of confuses me when we get down to the lip sync for your life. But anyway, it didn't make a difference. So do you actually deserve to go home. Um, I was kind of rooting for her a little bit because she is a YouTube girl like myself, but... Girl, they gave you exactly what you needed. Honey. They gave you, girl, get your bag, get your Korean dress, get your ticket for the Megabus, bitch, it's time to go. I said, oh, well, good night, Miss Soju, but that's it. So, a lot of girls, honey, I don't know, we, we definitely are going to have to have some double eliminations in here because there's so many girls. This shit will be on until Christmas. But anyway, I'm enjoying it, child. It was a good first episode. I enjoyed the girls. They're very interesting. They're very interesting. They do a lot of reading. They real catty. They real catty. So we'll see. We'll see what goes on. All right, you guys. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you next week. Later.